My name is Peter Sporer and you're here of course at the White Horse Railway. I do have a problem. It's getting rid of moles. Twice a year, in spring and in late autumn, you get these mole attacks. And to overcome this, you're going to need a number of things. One of course is the mole trap. This is a very simple device. I'll show you more closely later. You're also going to need a trowel for burying your trap into the ground. And you're also going to need a mole prodder to find out where the tunnels are under the ground. I'll be showing you how to use these to get rid of moles from your Gauge 1 tracks. For those of you who have never seen one of these before, it's a mole trap. It's a very simple device that grasps the mole. You put a little trip here and by going like that it grips the mole inside the tunnels. Not only do I have these huge molehills on this side, you can see they're proceeding in a straight line. From here they also move across to here and there are two little shows here. So this hard-working little fellow has been proceeding all the way from the far hedge across my tunnel area and into the wood chopping area. Here are two small mowhills on the other side of the rayout that are coming through from my neighbour's hedge. I've even got one that's pushing up soil through one of my golf holes in my back garden. So here we have two molehills and there's every chance that there's a tunnel leading from one to the other. One way is to dig into the tunnel and find it. We do this with the prodder. So here's the prodder. There's a good chance the tunnel is going to be somewhere between these two. If I place it into the ground and push I get a firm response. The ground is solid here. So we keep... Ah! That felt a little better. Up there. You just keep pushing until you suddenly feel an air gap. Ah! <laughs> I feel a real air gap here and a hard bottom to the tunnel. See how deep it is. Just try another one. Oops, there it is, all right. There's where our tunnel is, and that is where we're going to dig deep. So we take our trowel and press it into the ground and cut out a nice circular plug. Whoa, did you feel that one go? That one went down into the tunnel, definitely. Dig out the soil. We know it's down about nine inches. A few stones down there. So, we have a tunnel here. There's one there. There's one there. 
So now we take our trap and we prepare it. And when the mole comes in here and pushes against this, it gets gripped and killed instantly. There's all the air winded out of it. Some people say you should use gloves and whatnot, not put your scent on this. I don't think it makes any difference at all. So we place the trap so the mole will go in there and hopefully trip it. Now, there's two ways of, uh, or four schools of thought. You can either fill this with loose earth, and some, but some people, and I prefer this method, I put grass in to begin with, so it leaves an air space. And then cover it so the daylight doesn't get in there. Now there's our trap and you can see the two tongs. When they open up like that, I know that it's gripped something. Now the last thing we do is we take a small bamboo cane and we mark where it is. Because I'm going to clear all this up. And it's surprising how you can lose though, where those two tongs are. This may have to stay here for a week before it's triggered. So we have these two traps set. I'm just going to do one more up in the embankment. Finish it off with my marker so I know where it is. So here's our trap. Set it. Lay it so it's in the runway. And in this instance, I think I'll use the loose soil method. To fill up the gap. So he might come along and think, oh, my tunnel has collapsed. This is Mutt, by the way, my dog. Oh, I've got to put a stone down there. He loves to catch these. That's rats what he really likes. So there's the trap all set. Put the marker in place to show me where it is or remind me. Because as I was saying, you've got to be patient now. It might take a week. So there we have it. With the aid of my prodder, I found the toddles. With the aid of my trowel, I dug the holes, the trap holes, and then with the mole trap, placed it all into place. Now we've got to be patient. If today is Wednesday, as soon as I see a trap that's been sprung, I'll get back to you. See you soon. Well, here we are. It's now eight days after I set that trap. And look down here. It's sprung. The dog is interested. Let's see if there's anything on the end of these claws. Damn, nothing. Try again. See, there's some mole heels here. There's one, two, three, four. So the damn thing's still active, and I'm still trying to catch him. So I'm just going to dig out the debris. And set this trap again. So here we have a mole trap which has been tripped. The jaws are open. I have no idea what I'm going to find underneath here. Let's take it apart and have a look. <laughs> As you can see, it's thoroughly crushed about the ribs, so it's virtually an instant death. But we've got one in this one. I do believe I've got another one over there that's also been tripped. So here we've got my marker. And I can see just here that there's one jaw. There's the other jaw, so this one's also open. Let's see what's in this one. Nothing. Often the case. So I know he's active in this zone, so I'll just clean out the hole and reset the trap in the same hole. There he goes. They don't like to see the daylight, so I'm just putting a few things around. 